Dr. Mark Strauss, we are looking uh, at various passages behind the scenes in the New Expanded Bible, for which you are the lead New Testament scholar. Uh, let's go away from the Gospels. We've looked at a couple of passages in the Gospel of Mark. We've looked at the beginning of John 1, the Gospel of John. Let's go a little deeper into the New Testament. Let's go to James. Uh, pick something out for us that we could look at. Absolutely, Charles. Let's let's look at James 1. Okay. Um, James 1.1. 1, 1. We'll start just at the beginning of James. And here the expansions really give the reader, they kind of set up the book to tell the reader about its, its context and background. Maybe what you would expect to get in an introduction to the mm -hmm. book. Um, James 1.1, 1, 1, again, I will read the base text straight through so you can hear what the text is translated. And then I'll, I'll give the expansions. James 1.1 1, 1 says, From James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to all of God's people who are scattered everywhere in the world. All right, that's our base text taken from the New Century Version, which is our base, um, a modified version of that text is our base text. Mm -hmm. So then we get some commentary notes at the beginning from James, and then the little C note in brackets, one of Jesus' brothers and a leader in the early church, and then a series of scripture references. That's because there's a number of different Jameses, people right. named James in the New Testament, and we want to tell the reader which one this is. This is Jesus' half-brother, James. Um, it then goes on, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after the word servant, we expand with two words, um, slave and bond servant. Mm, and, okay. And this is because this is, this is doulos a, at work. This here. is doulos at work, exactly. Right. This is because this is a very difficult Greek word to translate. The Greek word doulos, um, we would say the closest equivalent is slave. Um, but then sometimes slave is too strong, especially when we think in terms of the history of American slavery and the fact that a doulos in the ancient world could be the household steward or manager. It could be like a CEO of a large company. That could be a doulos. A slave meant someone who was technically owned by someone else, but may in fact be of almost any social status could himself or herself own slaves of their own and, and could have very high responsibility. So how do you translate that? Well, we often expand doulos. In this case, the base translation says servant, because that's probably the best mm -hmm. word in this mm -hmm. context, because it refers, in the Old Testament, the word is used of, of Moses as God's servant and, and, and so forth. And, and bond servant, where you also mentioned, right, right. Is, is not easy for us in no, the 21st century exactly. to understand exactly. It's not either. a phrase we would use normally. So we expand servant to slave. Neither of those quite gets, gets it, because to say servant, we usually mean someone who's hired, who mm -hmm. you pay. Mm -hmm. um, but this person was actually owned in that culture. They were owned by the owner, but, but they, were, they could have a whole range of different statuses. So bond servant means a servant who is actually owned. Now, so we, in the end, we, use, we add um, something that's very unusual English, but in fact captures a bit of the nuance of the first century context and world. So we're expanding to give you try a bigger picture of what this word actually can mean in a variety of different contexts and what it does mean in this particular context. That's one phrase. <laughs> um, from James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the addressees, to whom it's addressed, to all of God's people. Now that's a very idiomatic translation. We could say a, f a paraphrase of that phrase because it literally says to the 12 tribes. Mm to the 12 scattered tribes. Scattered all over the world. Yes, well, then the next phrase says, who are scattered everywhere yes. in the world. So we, we, we expand by putting L, the 12 tribes. So we tell the reader immediately what the literal translation is. And then we give a commentary note because they're not going to know maybe what the 12 tribes are or why James would be writing to these 12 tribes. So we say, see, an allusion to the 12 tribes of Israel the Old Testament context of the 12 tribes. But then we further expand by saying, referring either to Jewish Christians or to believers as the new covenant people of God. All right, now here we've got Christians. Now, now we're going now theological. We're going theological bit, and interpretation. So James says, I'm writing to the 12 tribes. He essentially says, I'm writing to Israel. But 
who is Israel? And there's an enormous mm -hmm. theological discussion and debate as to whether this represents what some would say the new Israel, the church that has replaced Israel, or whether this represents Jewish Christians, those Jews have to, have, who have come to Christ. And so we give the reader both alternatives and say this could mean this or this could mean this. You need to do some more study if you want to come to a conclusion on what this, this means. So again, it draws the reader into the text. It tells them, it introduces them to a theological discussion and debate. Both views have significant support in the New Testament. Both views have great theological significance in terms of who we are today as the church, as the people of God, etc. Um, the last phrase, to all God's people who are scattered everywhere in the world, we give a literal description, in the diaspora or in the dispersion. The word diaspora means the dispersion. Now again, that's going to confuse readers often. What does dispersion mean? So we say, C, we give a commentary note, a reference to the scattering of the Jews during the Babylonian captivity. The diaspora or dispersion, that term was used when Israel went into exile, when Israel was scattered, especially Judah, the southern tribe, but all of Israel actually was scattered and sent into exile. And so James is saying God's people have gone into exile. They're now all over the world. And so I, writing from Jerusalem, am trying to bring them back together to give this message um, for, for God's people. And then we add, now applied to the church, because we know certainly that James is writing to Christians, whether they are Jewish Christians or all Christians, he's writing to Christians. And so the diaspora, a term originally applied to Israel, scattered abroad, now is being applied to the church that has been scattered, perhaps because of persecution they've been scattered. Now, if you would like a copy of the expanded Bible, and I'm not recommending this as your primary Bible, but as a secondary study Bible to help you know more of God's revealed Word, God's Word that will change you in heart and mind, then you can get that from us as a thank you for your gift this summer, this August, to Haven Today. Just stay on the website, click the little button with your cursor, and you can make your gift and we'll get your copy of the Expanded Bible New Testament in hardback form out to you right away. May the word of the Lord dwell in you. No, may the word of the Lord dwell in you richly as together we share the great story that's ultimately all about Jesus. <laughs>